So today it seems we get our first preview at the new Admet Codex rules. Though I must admit at this point I'm not sure Games Workshop have been given Admet players much to get excited about. Let's talk through two of the new detachments and all the rules that Games Workshop have showcased. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're taking a look at the first rules previewed from the upcoming Adeptus Mechanicus Codex, the one that's going to be going on pre-order this weekend. The Admet Codex is definitely one that's been hotly anticipated by people collecting the army. They perhaps haven't had the best start to 10th edition, to be honest. Initially one of the weakest factions in the game, and while the points changes have helped their tournament prospects a little bit, they're now winning around about 48% of games, which isn't awful. They still seem like an army that's got loads of issues, that hopefully a bunch of new detachments and rethought out units might help address. Perhaps the biggest gripes with the Admech Index is that the Codex is just really heavily reliant on certain units like Cataphron Breachers for their main damage dealing, plus the Omni Sterilizer Tech Priest. The Rad Bombardment is really quite weak as a detachment rule, though Games Workshop did say that they're going to be tweaking it in some way to hopefully make it a bit more impactful. Units are really quite cheap in points, but cost quite a lot in a monetary value making Admech perhaps even more expensive than it had been previously in the past. And the core faction rule, the Doctrina Imperatives, only affects a fairly small subsection of the army, things like ranged Skitari and Cataphron Servitors, everything else basically doesn't get a whole army-wide faction rule. In any case, we know that the new Codex will now up that to five different detachments, four new ones coming alongside the Rad Cohort, and we also have the Scatros Stilt Sniper on the way as well and this one's another fresh chance for them to look at points costs should they choose to. Hopefully between all that they can improve the lot of the Mechanicus a little bit, and this preview has details of a couple of detachments, the mysterious Explorator Manipul that has a rule that focuses around claiming objectives for the Omnisire, and the Cohort Cybernetica, a formation that focuses on the Castellan robots, but also the Skitari vehicles as well. First up, and perhaps a slightly disappointing clarification, is that Doctrina Imperatives does seem to be completely unchanged. This one's the one that allows the Tet Priests to program their little minions, either adding on the Heavy or the Assault keywords to their shooting damage output. The Protector one also makes your units a little bit tougher when they're in their own deployment zone, and the Conqueror one improves damage output with extra AP against things in the enemy deployment zone. It's definitely not a bad rule and does help out shooting units, though basically does absolutely nothing for melee units whatsoever, and it does sound like it's still going to be limited to one subset of the army, so it won't be affecting things like the Electro Priests or the Castellan Robots, not outside of the Cohort Cybernetica in any case. I guess it does make some sense from a lore point of view, but I feel like it's still going to be a bit disappointingly limited, with a good portion of Admech units just not really caring at all about their own main special rule. On to the new stuff though, and first up we have the Explorator Maniple. This one sounds like it's setting up to be a bit more of a general purpose detachment that isn't just ties to any one subset of units, and the primary rule revolves around claiming objectives for the Omnisire acquisition at any cost. The way that this one works is that you nominate one objective in your command phase, your entire army gets two reroll wound rolls of one against that nominated objective target, so any enemy units on that objective are going to be a little bit easier to kill. As a core rule for a detachment, it's not nothing, but it's really not that good. V-roll wound rolls of 1 gives you a plus 70% damage boost against your given target, presuming you don't already have V-roll wounds from something else like Twin Links. I guess it's a nice enough buff if a good chunk of your army can all focus firepower on one tanky enemy unit trying to hold down a point, and I guess being able to reapply it to the most important objective each turn will help out a little. Overall, I would probably rate it a bit stronger than the Rad Bombardment as it currently stands, though that maybe isn't saying all that much. It might be the supporting rules that really determine how good that core rule is, really. With a lot of detachments in 40k, they generally tend to key off the primary rule, so I'm sure we'll be able to do other weird things with the acquisition objective. The only rule that has keyed off that so far that we've seen is the Genitor Enhancement. This one grants you a 4 plus invulnerable save to your unit when you're on the acquisition objective, so maybe it could be nice for something like, say, a Tet Priest Dominus or Manipulus, leading a squad of Cataphron Breaches or something into the midfield. I guess could be okay on the basic Skitari troops as well. I think it would have to be kind of cheap though if it was going to justify itself on 10-man squads of Vanguard or Rangers. Otherwise, they've given us two other preview stratagems, both of which I think are alright. Reactive Safeguard for 1 CP is the option to jump back into a transport after your squad was charged. You have to be within 3 inches of that transport though. 
That one feels like it could be a useful enough one for something like Corpuscari Electro Priests having just jumped out of a Dune Rider, or the same for some Rangers or Vanguard perhaps, particularly if this was basically a situation where if they didn't pop the stratagem they'd just basically get charged and killed, and the opponent might have to settle for the consolation prize of attacking the Dune Rider instead. I guess that one makes this formation a bit of a better one for the Scorpius Dune Riders. Finally, and really quite a nice one for objective scoring, is Cached Acquisition. This one's a version of the Sticky Objectives type rule, and you basically use it when one of your units was just slain on an objective. I guess most normally that would be from a shooting attack, seeing as the enemy might be on it if you killed them in melee. Though I suppose it could apply to Overwatch or other types of damage as well. Basically the rule happens that you can use the stratagem on the unit that's on the objective, and then the objective remains under your control until the opponent controls it at the start or end of any turn. And this one just seems very useful for say putting a light unit onto an objective, the opponent shoots you off it if they can't get anything nearby, but then the objective will remain yours. This one does seem like a very nice one just to have in the bag for victory point scoring, though it's not going to add any actual strength to the damage and defence game for the army. Obviously it's going to depend on the other stratagems and the other enhancements and what they cost for how strong this is overall. I feel like the core rule maybe isn't super impactful but definitely isn't unhelpful. A little bit more damage on the unit that needs it most is fine. I guess we'll have to wait and see whether or not the other stratagems beat out the rad cohort ones. Otherwise the other formation previewed is the cohort cybernetica. This one did sound like a curious one, seeing as Games Workshop basically said that it was going to mainly apply to the Castellum robots. The big chunky automata are really quite a fun part of the Admech Codex, though it's kind of unusual to have a detachment that really is trying to flavour around literally one unit, though it does sound like this one provides some good stratagem support for Admech vehicles as well. The detachment rule though, I must admit, I don't think is super exciting. They didn't preview the full text of it, but in their free text they said that it's really quite a simple rule, Legio cybernetical units get access to your Doctrina imperatives, so that's either heavy on assault on their guns, and extra AP or an AP deep off respectively. Legio cybernetica in general would only apply to the Castellum robots and the Datasmith unless Games Workshop hand out some keywords in very strange ways, and the other Skitari vehicles already have Doctrina imperatives, so it wouldn't do anything for them even if they did seem to get the keyword for some weird reason. Again, I must admit, this one probably isn't going to be what Amec players were hoping for, I think. The heavy keyword might mean that the shooting Castellans will be hitting on a 3+, which is a bit more dangerous for them. I'm still not sure that going for heavy Phosphor Blasters in a big way is really going to be sensible, though in 10th edition, mid-strength shooting with limited AP just isn't going to be that great for shifting things like enemy big vehicles or monsters. Perhaps the Assault keyword could be a bit more helpful, though, for Castellan robots moving up the board, Perhaps being able to fire off some shooting with their second Phosphor Fist and their Incendan Combuster while they make it towards the fray and then charge the opponent. I guess the Assault keyword for them seems helpful enough, though I'd still say it's not the most exciting buff in the world and literally for one data sheet in the army. The other previewed support looks kind of okay though in my opinion. The Necro Mechanic Enhancement might be the single best of the bunch. This one seems like it's almost auto-include for a Tech Priest buffing a bunch of vehicles. Once per battle round, you get to nominate a Legio Cybernetica or Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle unit that just failed a save. Then this translates the damage output of a failed save to become zero, so you could have something really big like, say, a last cannon with D6 plus 1 damage suddenly not do anything at all. This one's a seriously good debuff and really nice to have in the centre of a formation. With the right weapons, even a single failed save can be big damage, so you could, say, have a last cannon kill D6 plus 1 wounds of a Castellan robot, that roughly equates to over 60 points worth of model saved in a single turn, never mind if you manage to nullify similar attacks on multiple turns of the game. Unless this one is very, very pricey, it seems like one that you want to have in the army. Otherwise, the next one that we've got is Emotionless Clarity. This one seems fun, but maybe not as reliably useful as the first one. This one basically allows you to auto-explode a vehicle or robot within 12 inches when it dies once per turn, rather than rolling for it to normally deadly demise and only explode on a 6. I do quite like auto-explode rules, they are pretty fun and could actually shower the enemy with a good amount of mortal wounds if they're in the wrong situation, but I feel like committing to doing that pre-game and also on a vehicle that's got to be both close to the enemy lines and also have a tech priest nearby that's pretty close to the enemy lines too, and you might just be gambling on a few good things coming together for this to actually get any use. I guess if it winds up being pretty cheap, then it could be nice to have on a Tech Priest moving forward with some vehicles. Castellans have Deadly Demise 1, 
so do Sindonian Dragoons. I guess you might also have the Scorpius Dune Riders moving towards the front as well. They've got Deadly Demise D3, and they feel like they could be potentially in a situation where their explosion could hit more enemy units than yours, so that could be worth consideration there. Maybe it's a nice one for a Tet Priest jumping out of one of those in particular, if the opponent happens to kill it in a helpful position to you. Finally, for today's previews, we've also got the Cohort Cybernetica Stratagem Auto Divinatory Targeting, and this one is a damage buff for one Admech Vehicle Unit shooting against enemies that are holding down one nominated objective. As damage buffs go, it's okay. The Ballistic Skill of the Fire gets to be a 3+, plus, so that means it would start with things like the Doctrina Imperatives for the Heavy Keywords to potentially hit on a 2 if you're static. The unit gets to ignore cover, but you can only target enemy units that are on that nominated objective and not anything else. I guess if we're trying to make the theme of shooty Castellan robots work, then I suppose that could have a whole load of phosphor shots hitting on either a 3 plus or a 2. Theoretically, that could be 40 shots from a Datasmith buffed unit, or that strength 6 hitting on a 3 or a 2. Or I guess other more efficient users might be the Scorpius tanks, where both the Ferromite or the energy cannons could be interesting or perhaps Iron Striders with some LAS cannons. For 1 CP, I'd say it seems usable enough, though maybe not enormously stand out. I think it's going to be biggest if you're shooting something that both appreciates the extra ballistic skill and also the extra AP. So for example, if you were taking aim at something like a Space Marine Redemptor Dreadnought holding down an objective and it was in cover. Overall, it does feel like it's trying to build you into a slightly specific army with Castellans plus vehicles. I guess you'd have fast Castellans moving up the board that both move quickly and also shoot with the Assault Doctrina, being able to nullify more damage than normal with the Enhancement, and the potential for some focused high ballistic skill ignores cover firepower out of some vehicles in the army. Lastly, from the previous set of previews that we had for the Adeptus Mechanicus, they have already given us a few peeks at the Iskitari Hunter cohort. That one seems very focused on the Iskitari datasheets for the Codex, Though admittedly compared with any other subset of Admech, they are the majority pretty much. The core rule, as we've seen before, gives Skitari Infantry mounted an Iron Strider Ballistari the stealth keyword, so that will be a minus one to hit at range, which is pretty helpful for winning firefights, I guess. Plus, the Sicarian Infantry unit specifically get cover as well if they're outside of 12 inches, though they might be able to get that already, I suppose. Overall, seems usable enough as a core benefit. Stealth will be handy to just debuff enemy ranged firepower a little. It's not going to make any difference to a primarily melee army that you might be facing though, and plenty of armies do also deal things like lethal hits or sustained hits on sixes. This won't debuff that at all. Otherwise, the stratagem that they previewed for this one was Binaric Offensive. This one's a pricey one at 2 CP, but 2 Skitari units get an extra AP-1 against one chosen enemy target, but then they can only attack that unit. I feel like for an AP boost for 2 CP, that's rarely going to be all that attractive really. You'd have to buff two very meaningful things, taking down a meaningful enemy target with some very high saves. Annoyingly, probably Catafron Arc Rifles will be the best target of that, but they can't use it as they're not Skitari. Hopefully some of the five other stratagems might be a little bit more interesting. My guess would be that we'll probably see some movement or redeployment type things, with the focus seeming to be on stealth tactics for this one. Overall, I must admit, probably not the single most exciting set of rules previews that we've had so far. The buffs that we've seen here do seem to be a bit limited to certain things within the army and maybe not being all that strong. I would bear in mind, though, that there could still be plenty of other interesting stuff within the other stratagems and the data sheets and points. It's not like current Admech were getting much of their strength from the detachment rule and the bad bombardment at the moment, anyway. In any case, I'll certainly be looking forward to any more rules previews that we get from the Admech as Games Workshop starts to show us more, and I'll look forward to reviewing the Codex when we get it. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see more breakdowns like this, or the full coverage of the Codex when it's out. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.